and thicker than its predecessor due in large part to that big display. And the phone is also about 15 grams heavier. But the S5 does move away from the glossy feel of the S4 as Samsung has opted for a soft touch material for the back. On the front, we do still have the same uh, layout, but instead we have a change from the menu button of the S4 to a recent apps button for the S5. Now, one thing that the Galaxy S5 can definitely boast over the original S4 is its water and dust resistance. An IP67 certification helps it really stand the elements. As far as the screens go, we do have a slightly larger screen on the Galaxy S5, the Super AMOLED screen coming in at 5.1 inches compared to the 5-incher that was on the Galaxy S4. Yes, these are essentially identical screens, however, and that means that you have some oversaturated colors, but overall really good and enjoyable performance in that user experience for the display. While we do see a big update in the processing package for the Galaxy S5, we will say that the Snapdragon 600 that was originally in the S4 is still doing a great job even to this day. And that should only mean that the Galaxy S5 will really set a higher bar when it comes to processing power. But then when we move on to the hardware department, we will, we will find that the Galaxy S5 does have a slightly larger battery, jumping from the 2600 milliamp hour unit in the S4 to the 2800 milliamp hour uh, unit on the S5. What we will say, however, is that the Snapdragon 805 in theory should be more power frugal. And also Samsung added in quite a few options for power saving. When it comes to the new features, however, everything that came from the S4 does make it to the S5, and then you have the additions of the fingerprint scanner, which is a slide type, and also the heart rate monitor that is found on the back. When it comes to the cameras, we do see that the 13 megapixel unit on the Galaxy S4 is looking to be trumped by the 16 megapixel isocell sensor that has been introduced in the Galaxy S5. This is a sensor that is supposed to take pictures with less noise and even in low light conditions produce a very nice picture. Now the app on the S5 has also been redone from the S4, touting all of its settings. When you hit the settings button, everything comes up that you'll be able to tweak for good smartphone photography. And in the end, we do see that the S5 is looking to just be a better better camera overall compared to the S4. And finally, when it comes to software, we were really hoping that there was going to be a big evolution from the S4 to the S5 when it comes to TouchWiz. Unfortunately, some of the aspects of TouchWiz were changed, but not enough to, in order to make it really feel like a big difference. The inclusion of a recent apps button on the S5 does allow it to have a little bit more multitasking that is more easily accessible, as you can just jump in and out of apps very easily instead of having to hold the home button in the S4. And finally, the My Magazine UI has been brought to the front and is now a second screen all the way on the left, much like a Google Now in stock Android. So it does change a few of the aspects, but in the end, TouchWiz still pretty much looks like TouchWiz. So if you were expecting a big change between the S4 and S5, you probably didn't get it here. In the end, both of these phones do represent some of the best that Samsung has had to offer. And in terms of the S5, it just continues that tradition. Whether or not all of the new things are going to be useful for you is definitely a question that you can answer for yourself. But the S4 is definitely no slouch, so it doesn't deserve to just be dismissed in this comparison.